Unconventional adventures with EVs is the core tenet of this channel. From backpacking on my electric skateboard to overlanding in my Tesla Model 3 and all sorts of custom wacky DIY builds in between. I've actually started to accumulate quite the extensive collection of electric rideables and my list of DIY projects and EVs I want to own grows basically every day. My uh, ambitions far outweigh my wallet. I wanted to start doing a series of check-ins talking about my garage of EVs and electric rideables, the ones I own and how they're doing on the adventures that I put them through, DIY builds that I currently have on the go, and future projects and EV purchases. And some of these I have not talked about on the channel before. So first up, let's talk about the stuff I actually have up and running currently and am using on adventures. First up, the thing that started it all, the Touring Electric Skateboard Build. It's the very first electric rideable that I obtained and it was purpose-built for skatepacking. That's backpacking on an electric skateboard. Skateboard. It's an Onboard W2 kit strapped to a loaded Bangra V2 deck. It's a 36 volt drivetrain. It's got two 500 watt belt drive motors on it, 90 millimeter wheels, and the unique part of this build, a top mounted battery case for hot swapping batteries on the go. And with the roughly 900 watt hours of batteries I have for it, I get about up to 50 kilometers of range on a single charge. From completely empty to full, it takes three hours to charge all my batteries in parallel. And I've been having problems with this thing, mostly with belt slipping and the pulley and belts constantly getting worn down and having to be replaced but when it comes to the belt slippage, I actually found the root cause of the problem. And it took me a while to figure out what the heck was going on there. It turns out, when I'm on gravel rail trails and just really dirty roads, dust is actually coating the wheel pulley and the belt, and that essentially is lubricating it, and that causes it to slip. I put a few thousand kilometers on this electric skateboard by this point, and I got a few trips under my belt. It's mainly used for summer trips, as once it starts getting wet and nasty out, it doesn't really work well in those conditions. It's really only good for paved roads and trails, and very, very firm gravel trails. On my last trip, I got it completely drenched in water. I was practically fording through water in that thing, like the water in some of the puddles I blew through was coming up to the deck. I'm honestly surprised the board survived that. By all accounts, it deserved to have kicked the bucket from the abuse I put it through on that trip. But it actually pulled through, and after swapping out the pulleys and the belts and all the bearings, it's running good as new. So it's pretty much good to go, and the next trip I have planned for it is to try and complete that section of the Trans-Canada Trail that I had to bail out on. The next vehicle is the Super 73 S1 Rose Avenue Edition. It's not exactly something that's meant to be used for bikepacking, but that's why I own it. It's got no suspension, <laughs> it's a heavy bike, and it's got no gearing on the chains whatsoever, it's a single gear. The battery on it's not very big, it's got limited range, but it does have a larger battery than the original S1. It's a 696 watt hour lithium ion battery. And with all my gear on, using just the throttle, I can get about 25 kilometers on it before I gotta charge. And when I do charge, now that I have a fast charger for it, I've cut the charging time down from five hours down to two and a half hours, literally cut it in half. It's got a 500 watt rear drive hub motor, 48 volt drivetrain. I don't really use it too much on trips as I try to focus more on like skateboard style electric rideables. As you saw on one of my last trips, I let the brakes get a little too loose and when I went down a downhill section, I almost got myself seriously hurt. That's actually the closest I've come to getting seriously hurt on any of my adventures. And I learned my lesson, the brakes on this thing are now actually properly tightened and I can stop. I was also having an issue with it where I kept getting flat tires. My best guess is that's mostly because I was putting the pressure up to the max rated pressure. I backed it off to 5 psi less than what it's rated for and that seems to help. I haven't gotten a flat tire yet. Let's hope it stays that way. And now I actually do have a set of spare inner tubes as well as a portable bike pump that I can use to swap out inner tubes if I do run into another flat while out on trail. Because it's a fat tire e-bike, it's pretty much good for year-round adventuring, even into the winter when there's snow on the ground as long as it's not too deep. Those four inch wide tires, man, they eat up mud and sand and snow. And unfortunately, it's currently down for the count. I dropped it while I was filming a video and broke the battery mount off of the frame. So the bike still works, everything still works. I just need to replace the battery Mount. Next one on the list is one that I currently got up and running, and that's the DIY electric snowboard build. And I am very proud of this one. It's the first of many strange DIY projects that I'm building for the purpose of adventuring on backpacking trips and the like. As far as I'm aware, this is the first working electric snowboard build that cost under a thousand dollars to build. Now, with the caveat, it does require specific conditions to work, but it does work. On prepared trails that have really dense snow or no less than two inches of powder on top of ice or snow or pavement or something solid that the wheel can bite into to push me forward. And this thing facilitates me to be able to go backpacking in winter. And when I started this project this past winter, it started off as a hot mess, didn't work at all, had no idea what I was doing, things were not designed properly. But with all the testing and tweaking and redesigns that we did here on the channel, it actually got to the point where it was actually starting to work by the end of the 
the season. Unfortunately, I didn't get to the goal that I wanted to hit, which was to be able to actually go on my first overnight backpacking trip on it. But man, we got so close. Early next season, when the next winter hits, we're probably going to be able to hit that point. There's just a few tweaks that have to happen to get it to that point. And like I said, this thing was cheap to build. It's just a run-of-the-mill Walmart-grade snowboard deck. I got it at the thrift store. It's an e-bike hub motor and 3D printed parts for the tread and the motor mounting arms. And I specifically chose the 500 watt 36 volt e-bike hub motor because I can then use my existing electric skateboard batteries to power that and have some commonality with the batteries and not have to get unique batteries for every build that I make. So we're almost at the point of being able to do the first overnighter and the aspirational goal by the end of next winter is to try and do a small section of the Trans-Canada Trail on the electric snowboard. And the next one on the list is one that's been ready to go for like a month now. I've just been waiting for the warm weather, and that is my autonomous electric inflatable raft. And the goal is to have a self-navigating raft using an ArduPilot-based flight controller and an electric outboard motor connected to an electric servo. I have all the primary components needed for the electric drive, so I've got a Minn Kota Endura C230 I've got a 1.2 kilowatt hour 12 volt LFP battery. The boat itself is uh, bought from Costco. It's a Tobin Sports Canyon Pro. And I've got both an AC charger and solar for charging the batteries. The only thing I'm missing is one additional battery. And if all goes well, in a couple weeks, I'll be taking it out on its first inaugural test run. And then towards the end of May, my first overnight raft packing trip with the electric raft. Now I don't have the autonomous parts for it yet. That's set to happen later this summer. The total battery capacity for this thing is going to be 2.4 kilowatt hours of lithium iron phosphate batteries. Two different batteries that I'm going to cycle back and forth. Well, one's actually running the boat. The other is going to be actively charged by 240 watts of solar that'll be deployed in the boat while I'm navigating. It's not going to go very fast. This whole setup is going to go anywhere from five to eight kilometers an hour. So to cover a 50 kilometer leg, which is the max range I'll be able to get out of all my batteries, give or take. That'll take basically the entire day. And if I wanted to get even more interesting, if I wanted to add an additional solar panel and make it 360 watts of solar, the motor only pulls 360 watts. So under perfect peak conditions, I could power the motor under entirely solar and not touch the batteries at all, other than being a buffer between the solar and the motor. And then just in case I do run out of battery power before I reach my destination, such as if I'm fighting up current or I'm fighting against wind, and for whatever reason the solar isn't working out too well, I do have a backup set of paddles for rowing. Now with the motor and the battery and all the charging equipment and all my camp gear, there's going to be a lot of stuff, but I am designing this whole setup to be portageable in a double carry. And I'm obviously going to design my trips to have very very minimal portaging to begin with. And once I've gone out on a few rides with it and have gained confidence in the whole electric drive setup, the first major trip that I have planned with it is the very western section of the Trans-Canada Trail, known as the Salish Sea Marine Trail. It starts at the western terminus of the Trans-Canada Trail out in BC, and it's a 270 kilometer stretch of oceanfront canoe trail that connects to the first land-based part of the trail. And the last thing on my list of things that I own is my Tesla Model 3, of course. It's not exactly what I would consider a traditional overlanding vehicle, but it is, as of now, the only EV that I currently own. And it is perfectly capable for camping trips and very light duty overlanding. Since I've only owned it over the winter so far, that's the only adventures I've been able to take it on. And other than getting it stuck in the snow twice, other than that, it's been performing perfectly. Of the three trips that I've gone with it, two of them I've slept in the car, which you wouldn't think it based on how small of a car it is, but with the rear seats folded, there's actually enough room in there for me to lie down flat. And because it's an EV, I can run camp mode all night to have a temperature controlled, what's essentially a sleeping pod. And the Model 3 is helping me test a lot of concepts, ideas, and gear that'll eventually be transferred to the Tesla Cybertruck once we make the move to that. For the car itself, I've got a little over 7,200 kilometers on the odometer, and I actually checked just yesterday, in the five months that I've owned the car, I've got a 1.36% battery degradation. Now, with LFP batteries, which is what my Model 3 uses, the degradation is the worst in the first few months, after which it levels off, and because I don't have a home charger, I subsist almost entirely off of the supercharger network. About once a week, I'll go and charge up at a supercharger. From near empty to completely full, it takes roughly 30 to 40 minutes to charge off a fast charger with my Model 3. But but that's very rare. When you're on a road trip, you're generally not going all the way from empty to full. You're only stopping for about 15, 20 minutes to get the amount of charge you need to get to the next supercharger in like 200, 300 kilometers. So unfortunately, there is a minor bit of damage with the car. It was damaged on a concrete pillar coming into our parking garage. It's currently going through insurance to get that dealt with. The first major trip that I have planned with this car is driving from Southern Ontario all the way to Halifax later this summer. So that's everything that I currently have. What about DIY projects that I have on the go? 
portfolio and near-term acquisitions that I'm looking at. Well, I'd like to talk about the Electric Dirt Surfer project. This is only a recent addition to my list, but it's also now the most immediate. The other day, like literally last week, I happened to cross something called a Dirt Surfer. Never heard of them before. And the more I looked at it, the more I thought that would actually make a really interesting electric conversion project since it essentially uses a standard small bike wheel. And so just for a joke, I decided to check Facebook Marketplace and lo and behold, I actually found a guy selling one for dirt cheap, almost brand new, for a fraction of what those things would go brand new. I jumped on it. And I am now the proud owner of a dirt surfer. As far as an electric conversion, this should actually be pretty straightforward. I should be able to just drop out the existing wheel and replace it with the similar diameter e-bike hub motor kit that I found on Amazon. Bolt a small case to the middle of the deck to hold the ESC and my batteries. And because I've already got that electric snowboard build done and out of the way, I can use all the knowledge gained from that build and apply it to this build. So this will be an easy build, assuming I don't run into any weird fit issues. And much like all my other electric rideables, this will be used for a lot of coverage of the Trans Canada Trail sections. I'm actually aiming to have this thing up and running within the next couple months with the goal of being able to do some overnights and eventually a section of the TCT by the fall of this year. And because it's got a large wheel, I can use this pretty much a year round as long as there's not too much snow on the ground. And uh, next up is one of my personal favorite upcoming projects, the plank board. <laughs> have you ever wondered what would happen if you strapped electric skateboard parts to a 2x8 plank of wood? Well, you're not gonna have to wait too much longer. The entire goal of this project is to build a long range, 100 kilometer capable electric skateboard build for as cheap as possible, while also still being reliable and capable of carrying me and all my backpacking gear. No $300 longboard deck. Nope, I went to the hardware store and bought a $14 plank of wood. And so what if it breaks mid-ride? I'll just stop at a Home Depot and buy a new plank of wood. <laughs> swap all the hardware over. And if it starts warping in one direction, I just remove all the hardware, flip it over, and reattach everything. I guarantee you the real build of this thing is gonna look just as dumb as this 3D render, which is to scale, by the way. It shows everything appropriately sized, and this is roughly how it'll look in real life. Originally, the goal was to try and use deep cycle lead acid batteries on this build. 2.4 kilowatt hours of lead acid batteries would have weighed 120 pounds, but I was talked out of using those for a variety of reasons. The main one being that when under significant amp draw, you actually get less capacity than the rated capacity. I worked it out to be, I'm only gonna get about 60% of my usable capacity out of this thing. So with how heavy this board was already being, and then knowing I wasn't being able to even reach my 100 kilometer range mark, I took people's advice and and changed it out to lithium iron phosphate batteries. I'm going to reuse the two 12 volt batteries that I have for my electric raft build and just wire them in series to form a 24 volt drivetrain system. I'm gonna use two flip ski 500 watt 24 volt motors. It'll be another belt drive system and six inch airless tires. And I'm just gonna use a set of foot bindings mounted to the wood. This thing is only gonna be able to go like 20 kilometers an hour with me and all my gear on it and the low voltage of the drivetrain. But the goal is to go far, not fast. And yes, I do plan on using this to complete sections of the Trans-Canada Trail. After the electric dirt surfer build is complete, this is the next priority on the list. Now, is this thing gonna work? Is it gonna hold together? I have no idea. <laughs> Let's find out together. I'm hoping to have this thing built and ready to go by the end of this year. And the next thing on the list, and one I know I have not talked about on the channel before, at least in the context of me owning one, is a Toyota RAV4 EV. It actually used Tesla parts. It used a 41 kilowatt hour Tesla battery pack and a Tesla drivetrain. I frankly consider it a piece of EV history, and it's proof that Toyota has a soul will eventually be a somewhat expensive import of a used Toyota RAV4 EV from the States, since there's like none of these in Canada, like at all. If I do import one, it'll be one of the very few in the country. What I want to do with it is I want to use it as a tow behind trailer overlanding rig. I'm planning to bolt 1.2 kilowatts of high efficiency solar to the roof and to the hood, similar to the solar leaf project that's floating around. And then on the tow behind trailer, another 1.2 kilowatts of high efficiency solar. If you do the math with the size of the RAV4, RAV4's battery on a perfect condition day that's capable of charging the RAV4 from completely empty to completely full in three days. The idea is to wire all that solar directly into the battery to charge it. This will be a long running project, but the goal is to at least have some movement by the end of this year. And of course, I will keep you guys updated on that. And we will be using this thing for overlanding into areas where there's absolutely no charging infrastructure whatsoever, not even a 120 volt outlet to prove that you can go places that some gas cars can't even go. The only downside is the EV version of the RAV4, they never made an all wheel drive, so it'll be a two wheel drive only. And the next up on the list and the crux of what this entire channel started to grow around, the Tesla Cybertruck. 
by all accounts, everything we're seeing, they actually seem like they're ready to start production this year. I'm going to guess towards the end of summer of 2024 is when I'll be able to actually say, yes, I would like to confirm my order. And of course, once we get the Cybertruck, we'll use it for some real hardcore overlanding, backcountry camping. We'll test the full self-driving on the most backcountry, rural, dirt roads you can find. And I'm hoping to eventually be a test rig and trial mule for any companies that are designing Cybertruck specific overlanding and camping equipment. If all of that stays on track, maybe I'll be able to take delivery by the end of next year. Next up on the list is the end goal for my electric skateboard backpacking rig, the Lacroix Lone Star Super Sport. It is the undisputed king of long range electric skateboards. This thing has a maximum rated range of 160 kilometers. It's got an absolutely massive 2.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack strapped to the underside. And even with that massive battery pack from completely empty to completely full still only takes three hours to charge. You bet your ass we're going to be doing a lot of the Trans Canada Trail on this thing. It's also got a gear drive, so no more of this debris and the drivetrain issues that I've been having. And the only problem is the price tag. This thing is clocking in at about eight thousand dollars. It'll be super funny to compare that to my plank board build, which will cost literally one tenth of what that one costs. And while I don't have any promises, the current goal is to try and have that ready to go by summer of 2024. And the last thing on the list of short-term acquisitions is the Zero Motorcycle DS. It's Zero Motorcycle's lowest tier dual sport electric motorcycle, which has a rated range of 130 kilometers on a 7.2 kilowatt hour battery pack. It'll be neat to slot electric motorcycle motor packing into the stuff that I do on the channel. I haven't planned it out too much what I want to do with it because obviously my focus is on stuff like the Lone Star and the Cybertruck, but I will be using this for all sorts of long range road trips and motor packing adventures and proving that even with a short range electric motorcycle, you can still get on some pretty interesting adventures. And this is just aspirational at this point. It is the lowest priority of all the other stuff that I want to get a hold of. I would like to try and get a hold of one and have that ready to go, have my motorcycle license and insurance and all that set up for by the end of 2024. My entire goal is to bring you guys really interesting and unique adventures with EVs and DIY builds. So please let me know in the description what you do like or do not like content wise. I want to make stuff that you guys want to watch. As it stands now, I am definitely running this YouTube channel well at a loss. If you do want to help, there's two really great ways to do so. The first is to join as a channel member and get access to my Discord server where you can talk to me and other members. And the second is to visit my shop where you can order 3D printed outdoors equipment that's made by yours truly. You help me fund some of the projects that I'm working on and you guys get some really cool and unique 3D printed camping gear that I myself personally use. I hope you guys like what you see and if you want to see all the crazy adventures that I get up to with these EVs, click the card.